Can you tell what kind of baby animals these are? That's right, puppies. So many cute, adorable baby doggies. They look so cuddly, but you can't resist wanting to take one home. But before you do, take a closer look. Because these puppies aren't your usual pampered pooches. They might look like your family pet, but these puppies were born and are growing up out in the wild, far, far away from any people. They come from different countries all over the world and roam free on every continent. Come and walk on the wild side with some of the cutest canines you've ever seen. They're the puppies of the wild on Cute Wilds. When you think about the kind of puppies who grow up wild and free, I bet the first kind of wild pup that comes to mind is the wolf. So it's not surprising that your family dog's closest canine cousin is in fact the gray wolf. Look how cute these wolf puppies are. They are so sweet at this age. To find gray wolves and their adorable pups living wild and free, you have to travel very far, deep into the North American wilderness, to the fresh, damp, and dense forests of British Columbia, Canada. This is where gray wolves call home. Grays are the most plentiful members of the wolf clan, and they go by lots of different names, like timber wolves, Western wolves, or just plain old-fashioned wolves. Wolves live in packs of seven to eight family members. The pack has very close bonds and does everything together, including hunting, traveling, and setting up a den. This pack has a mom and a dad, their new puppies, and the puppy's older brothers and sisters. The mom and dad are called the alpha male and female, and they are definitely the leaders of the pack. It is fall, and food is scarce for this wolf family and their young, cute puppies. The adults set out to join the hunt for food, leaving the pups behind at the shore. But don't worry, they aren't left alone. Their older brother has been tasked with babysitting duties while the adults are gone. Big Brother is not an experienced hunter yet, but he's old enough to take care of most of the puppy's needs. There we go. Now all the brothers and sisters are together, waiting for mom and dad to return with some delicious food to eat. It turns out to be a long wait, so a couple of the pups decide to give barnacles a try. They get a little bit of protein into their tummies, but it's not enough to keep them from getting hungry again right away. So Big Brother leads the pups into a meadow, where there's more chances to find food. The meadow also seems like a safe place for the puppies to do a little bit of exploring on their own. But the littlest cute ones don't stray too far from Big Brother's protection. They should be practicing their hunting skills, but it's so much more fun to play and hang out with your buds. Meanwhile, deep in the forest, the adults search for anything tasty and nutritious they can bring back to their family. Wolves eat large hoofed animals like elk, deer, moose, and caribou, as well as small game like beaver and rabbit. They're keen hunters, but wolves have no problem scavenging a meal from animals that have died from other causes. But no luck so far. Back in the meadow, the pups are getting more and more impatient for their dinner. Then suddenly, one of the young pack sends members an alert. Something is wrong. The pack's instincts kick in. They silently signal to each other. One by one, they're alerted. Big Brother knows something's wrong, but what? Even the tiniest cute ones know something is not right in the forest. They soon get their answer. It's a black bear. 
As he moves from the forest to the river, the bear has no idea that he's wandered into a wolf pack's territory. He's probably just looking for something to feed his own family. And while tiny wolves aren't the bear's first choice for dinner, the puppies are smart enough to know they could make a nice snack for a very hungry bear. The intruder must be dealt with. The pups are in a panic. This is their first encounter with such a large animal. They scatter, and their big brother no longer has everyone in his sights. He realizes he has only one choice. Call all the wolf packs in the area together. Remember, safety in numbers. The pack recognizes the howl for help and reacts quickly. All of them rush back to the aid of the babies. The bear hears something, the howls and barks of the wolf pack. He doesn't think much of it until the pack is upon him. The wolves don't attack. Just let the bear know that this is their territory and they're ready and willing to fight to the death for their puppies. The giant deadly bear is nothing more than a teddy bear when the wolves show him who's boss and decides to hightail out of there. For the wolves, that was all they wanted, to protect their cute ones. So they're free to grow up wild and playful too. The adults stay with the puppies for a while after the big scare. Wolves have super close bonds with their families, just the way that people do. And just like human grown-ups, it's the wolf grown-up's job to make sure all the little cute ones grow up big and strong. Mom and Dad know that those tummies aren't getting any emptier, so the hunt must go on. They take off back into the forest in search of prey. Their super sensitive noses guide them in the right direction, and they follow a promising scent trail. The adults leave again to carry on with their mission. The cute ones try to make the best of it, catching a few rays in the warm sunshine. If you travel all the way to the other side of the world, you'll end up smack dab in the middle of the habitat of another absolutely adorable member of the dog family. These precious pups live in the arid highlands of East Africa. This wolf is similar to the gray wolf in size and build. And that's where the comparison ends. These cute ones have narrow skulls and red and white fur and are almost extinct. Their pups are, without exaggeration, one of the world's rarest cute ones. Meet the Ethiopian wolves. Ethiopian wolves are one of the rarest members of the dog family and Africa's most endangered carnivore. Their overall adult population is estimated to be at most 440 individual animals left on the planet. They can be found only in this small desert region of Africa. Even though Ethiopia is close to the equator, some of the mountains are very tall and get so cold at night that the wolves wake up on frost-covered ground. Here come one, two, three canine cuties ready for a big day of fun. The pack is always centered around Mom, who is a single alpha female. And this year, Mama hit the jackpot. She has given birth to six healthy, happy, incredibly cute little pups. But if she's to take care of them all in these barren lands, she'll need the support of the whole family. And that means dad too. So every morning, all the males in the big pack set out on the hunt, leaving the mom and babies back among the rocks. Tiny wolf puppies can be a yummy lunch on the go for hawks and eagles. So mom stays close until dad returns to help protect the young ones. 
Just like other wolves around the world, the Ethiopian wolves are extremely social and want to hunt together. But unlike other wolves, these guys aren't looking for large prey. Good thing, because there's none to be found in these desolate lands. Instead, Ethiopian wolves are looking for patches of grass and sagebrush where small rodents might be hiding. This wolf pack has set their sights on grass rats. Unfortunately, a very cunning animal with mad skills escaping from the wolves. Here's another tasty morsel, the African mole rat. Wait, come back. Look how stealthy the wolf can be, waiting for his chance to pounce. But mole rats are quick on their tiny little feet and can burrow underground as fast as a freight train, it seems like. Meanwhile, the mom and the pups patiently watch the hunt unfold from a distance. Well, maybe the fuzzy precious pups not so patiently. Finally, the pack slowly gathers back with the day's loot. It's lunchtime, and everyone's excited. Like in all kinds of families, animal or human, someone is always grumbling, hey, leave some for me. After lunch, the gang either naps or plays, or both. These cute ones might not be so different from domestic dogs after all. Our next stop is not just a country, it's a continent. Australia has all kinds of habitat, but the center of the continent is hot, barren, and desolate. There are unique native plants here, like eucalyptus, and Australia is also home to some of the most unique animals on Earth. Kangaroos spring through the wilderness in search of a cool oasis where they can meet up with family and friends. In the trees, the koalas are lazily surveying their territory. And on the ground, a new litter of absolutely lovable Aussie pups are wondering what all the fuss is about. These are the wild dogs of Australia, and they are called dingoes. Dingoes are descended from domestic dogs that went feral. That means they decided to return to their wild dog roots. Dingoes are called semi-domesticated because hundreds and hundreds of years ago, they lived the life of family pets or farm dogs. But for some reason, they were left to run free and haven't looked back since. Today, they're far more wild wolf than family pet. Although it's hard to think that when you watch this precious puppy exploring his surroundings. <laughs> Dingoes also roam in packs. All pack members help the most dominant female and dominant male in raising their pups. No other female is allowed to have her own babies, so everyone focuses on just that one family. This includes helping to hunt for food for the pups, playing with them, as well as teaching them how to hunt. This might look like playtime, but the mom is actually trying to teach her puppy how to stalk and pounce. Dingoes will eat just about anything. They have one of the most diverse diets of any member of the animal kingdom. They're fine with over 170 types of prey, ranging from insects to buffaloes. They are hungry scavengers who won't shy away from berries or birds. They hunt tirelessly through vast areas of Australia, mostly at night. With smaller prey, they can hunt individually when they are targeting larger animals, they hunt with their pack. 
Dingoes are smart and thrifty. The next time you watch your dog bury a bone, think about this. Dingoes do the same thing. If they catch a meal that's more than they can consume in one feeding, they'll bury the leftovers to dig up later. It's like the hole they dig is really a dingo doggy bag. The super cute dingo puppies depend totally on their mothers during the first six to eight months of their lives. Mom is responsible for feeding them, teaching them, helping them get used to their growing bodies, and loving them every day. Talk about a full-time job. The moms are very good homemakers too, and they'll return to the same hidden, sheltered place each year to raise their young as long as the hideout remains undisturbed. Dingo puppies are the size of a peanut when they are born, but they grow up very quickly. Dingo moms produce lots of rich milk for their babies and are already introducing small amounts of solid food when they're just eight weeks old. But mostly, the precious little puppies think mother's milk is best. What a good mom. After the pups are fed and are fast asleep in their den, mama heads out to join the rest of the pack. When the parents leave the den to hunt, especially if they are anywhere near a watering hole, they always move downwind so that they can watch for predators without their scent drawing attention to the pup's hiding place. Sometimes they'll run into some of Australia's weirdest residents. These dingoes aren't quite sure what to make of this Komodo dragon, but they decide something that ugly can be very good to eat. Both parents collect food for their pups, usually traveling long distances from the den. They often leave nearby prey untouched, so when the puppies are learning to hunt, they'll have close targets to practice on. As the pups get older, they get braver and more frisky. Mom encourages her puppies to go exploring that's how they learn about their environment. Their territory gets gradually bigger as they grow. Eventually, they'll learn about the dangers of the wild on their own. Natural wonders like this giant waterfall look intriguing, but it's not exactly a safe playground for a young dingo. Their experiences will be helpful when it's time to set out to find a new lair and have wild, cute ones of their own. Some of the world's cutest wild pups are the ones you're about to meet. They live all over the world and their numbers are growing. No worries about extinction just yet. These cutie pie canines are experts at creating secret dens that are so well hidden, people just walk right by them out in the woods. Meet the incredibly cute baby foxes. Foxes are the most widespread species of wild dog on Earth. They're so adaptable, they can live in just about any habitat in the countryside or the city, in forests, mountains, and grasslands. Foxes are members of the dog family, but they have names all their own. A female fox is called a vixen. A male fox is known as a dog fox or a todd. Those cuddly baby foxes are called pups, kits, or cubs. A group of foxes isn't a pack. They're called a skulk or a leash. 
Foxes also seem to have a bit of cat in them as well. They are the only type of dog able to retract their claws. Unlike their other dog-like cousins, foxes don't form packs. They prefer a more solitary life, and when they do decide to mate, they mate for life. They also hunt and sleep alone. Foxes dig cozy underground dens where they take care of their kits and hide from predators. Foxes have babies once a year. Litters are usually about six pups. When fox babies are born, they are unable to see, hear, or walk, and their mother must take good care of them. When the kids are young, dad is the one who does all the hunting and brings back food for the entire family. Fox cubs live with their parents until they're seven months old. It's a pretty chill life if you're a kid fox. Playtime is all the time. Like wolves, it is generally only the dominant female who will have kids, and the other family members will often assist in the raising of the pups. The vixens protect the pups like they are their own, making sure they stay protected, and even giving them a bath when necessary. Foxes are known to be friendly and curious. They play among themselves as well as with other animals, just like our cats and dogs. Foxes may even try to convince a hedgehog to be their playmate, without much success. Foxes are most active after the sun goes down. In fact, they have vertical pupils like a cat that allow them to see in dim light. Amazingly, foxes can harness the Earth's magnetic field to help them hunt. Apparently, the fox can see the Earth's magnetic field as a ring of shadow on its retina. This ring darkens as it heads towards magnetic north. When the shadow and the sound the prey is making line up, it's time to pounce. The magnetic ring tells them exactly how far they need to jump to capture their prey. Now that's a very clever cute one. When we snuggle and play with our family dog, it's hard to imagine they ever could make it on their own in the wild but certainly their close relatives have found amazing ways to adapt and survive in all kinds of terrain and climates. It all proves once again that so many members of the animal kingdom can be tough, resilient, ingenious, and of course, downright cute. <laughs>